an independent investigation by the Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman PHSO, into changes made to the state pension age is due to conclude this year. The Ombudsman recently confirmed any recommendations it makes to the Department for Work and Pensions DWP, following the publication of its final report into injustice caused by the maladministration of changes to the state pension age, will be applied to everyone who has been similarly affected by the failings it identifies, not just the women who made a complaint. That will include any recommended financial remedy and could see around three. 6 million women born in the 1950s receive compensation after waiting five years for the long-awaited outcome. The PHSO investigation began in 2018, but due to the complexity of the case, some 650 pieces of evidence had to be reviewed, and after a legal challenge funded by thousands of WASPy women, Women Against State Pension Inequality campaign, into Stage 2 injustice, findings, it agreed to look again at its decision, causing further delays. It recently shared an update on progress of the investigation on its website and explained the reasons for the delays to the publication of Stage 2 and Stage 3, Remedy. The PHSO said, we had intended to publish our final investigation report by the end of March 2023. Following a legal challenge, we agreed to look again at part of our Stage 2 findings. This has delayed the publication of our final report. We have now looked at our findings and have shared our provisional views about injustice resulting from the maladministration we identified during Stage 1, and are thinking about remedy, with complainants, their referring MPs and the DWP. They all have an opportunity to comment on our provisional views before we make any final decisions about these issues. Chief Executive Officer at the PHSO, Rebecca Hilsenrath, explained to the Public Administration and Constitutional Affairs Committee PACAC, in November 2023 that the provisional findings for Stage 2 and Stage 3 had been sent in confidence, mostly by post, to the parties involved namely the UK government and around 500 women who made a complaint. The final report will be made public once the feedback has been received and the PHSO has made any necessary changes. Ms Hilsenrath indicated the deadline for responses was around Christmas and the final report should be published in the new year, assuming there are no more amendments to be made. The statement on the PHSO website continues, Our investigation has been complex, and it has taken a considerable amount of time. We appreciate the impact this will have had on the women affected. There have been many delays outside of our control. We have granted five extensions to allow involved parties additional time to consider our views and provide comments, and following the legal challenge, it was only right that we looked again at part of our Stage 2 report. We have carefully analyzed over 650 pieces of evidence over the course of our investigation to make sure any findings are robust and evidence-based. It added, as an independent ombudsman, our duty is to provide the right outcome for all involved and make sure justice is achieved. The cooperative approach we have taken to looking again at injustice will provide the quickest route to remedy for those affected. Commenting on the progress of the independent review, Angela Madden, chair of the Women Against State Pension Inequality WASPI, campaign, said, we are sad to say that snails could have conducted this investigation more quickly and efficiently than the watchdog has. The whole process has added insult to injury. Nonetheless we cautiously welcome the announcement from the ombudsman that he will report on his final conclusions, albeit in confidence to complainants. We also welcome the CEO's clear acknowledgement of the impact DWP's mistakes had on WASPy women. 
We urge the PHSO to carefully consider feedback from those affected and to maintain their commitment of presenting final conclusions to Parliament as soon as possible in the new year. Stage 1 of the PHSO investigation found between 1995 and 2004, DWP's communication of changes to state pension age reflected the standards it would expect it to meet. But in 2005, DWP failed to make a reasonable decision about targeting information to the women affected by these changes, that was maladministration. Get the latest record money news join the conversation on our Money Saving Scotland Facebook group for energy and money saving tips, the latest benefits news, consumer help and advice on coping with the cost of living crisis. Sign up to our record money newsletter and get the top stories sent to your inbox daily from Monday to Friday, including a special cost of living edition on a Thursday, sign up here. You can also follow us on X, formerly Twitter, at recordmoney underscore for regular updates throughout the day. In 2006, DWP proposed writing to women individually to tell them about changes to state pension age but it failed to act promptly, that was also maladministration. You can read the Stage 1 report on the PHSO website here. The PHSO has also shared background information into the investigation and frequently asked questions about the state pension age changes on its website. One question asks, does this mean that if somebody hasn't had a complaint accepted by you already, they won't benefit from any recommendations you might make? The PHSO said, no. If we make recommendations to the DWP, we will ask it to apply those recommendations to everyone who has been affected by any failings we identify. You can read all the questions and background information here. Join the Daily Records WhatsApp community here and get the latest news sent straight to your messages.